Hey kids, it's Ms. Kasapo. It's just here to talk a little bit about Raisin in the Sun Act 3. Right now we are going to talk a little bit about where we're up to, which is this section right here. Okay, we're up to the part where right after Walter loses the money, um, at the end when Mama is angry about um, him losing all the money, um, he basically ends at this lowest point in the text. And then we begin Act 3. Now Act 3 has a climax. That's when Linda shows up and then um, has a denouement which is a fancy word for resolution, where Walter does not take the offer. Walter finally becomes the man. There's a second um, second explanation and picture of the way a act, three-act structure is. And again, it's basically like a roller coaster. And when the end is resolved, everything is, is tied up. Now, an hour after act two ended, note the time, it's gloomy. Walter is alone by himself. He's alone in the world, right? So this is how he's basically at his lowest point, right? He's down at the bottom. Right? Think of it in, in terms of self-select. He's at the lowest point. He's at the nadir, right? where he needs to figure out how to become a hero. Right? Asagai shows up. He has a conversation with Benita about the money. She, asks, she tells him he gave it away. And he um, says to her, why did you stop caring? Um, and he says, what you just said is about a circle. It isn't a circle. It's simply a long line as in geometry, you know, one that reaches into infinity. And because we cannot see the end, we also cannot see our changes. And it's very odd, but those who can see changes, who dream, who will not give up, are called idealists. Those are, those are, and those who see only the circle we call realists. So he tells her that life is not a circle, it's like a line, right? And then he says, she says, while I was sleeping, people went out and took the future right out of my hands. And he says, was that your money? She says, what? Was it your money he gave away? It belonged to all of us. But did you earn it? Would you have had it at all if your father had not died? That's important, right? You know, he's kind of making her have perspective. No, then isn't there something wrong in a house, in a world where all dreams, good or bad, must depend on the death of a man, right? And he says, Alayo, you, your brother made a mistake and you are grateful to him so that now you can give up uh, the ailing human race on account of it. You talk about what is good struggle, what is good anything, where are you all going and why are we bothering? So he says to her, oh, you know, if you're going to give it up, you know, thank your brother. And basically he goes on to say he lives the answer every day. And then eventually, right, when it's all over, he says, come home with me. That's uh, basically um, him asking her to come to Africa with him, right? So this is a whole section of him saying, you know, if you're going to change, let's do something different and go to Nigeria, right? And then he leaves her. To think about what he said right and then she sits alone walter enters from his room he looks through things feverishly looking for something she turns up now here he's looking for linder's card and that's important right um she basically makes fun of him um she basically says um you're chairman of the board you're uh so great you think you're such a great thing. And then he finds what he's looking for, which is the card right here, right? And he calls her stupid. The door slams. Mama's about to point out and then put everything in perspective, right? She enters from the bedroom. Everything's unpacking. Ruth and Mama have a discussion about moving. And she says, you know, we're going to stay. We don't need the movers to come. And Lena Lena is desperate. She wants to move still. She basically says, we got to get out of here. We've got to move, right? Because this is her chance, you know, her one time. And then she says, I've been thinking about some of the things we could fix in this place. And then um, she basically is resigned to giving up everything, to give up dreams. Right? And that's a big deal because she's basically going to give it up. And then Walter comes in. And this is a really difficult scene, and it, it's really um, bad that we can't watch it, but it's a very difficult scene. He made a call to who? To the man. The man, Mama. Don't you know who the man is? Walter Lee. The man, like the guys in the streets say, the man, right? And then Benita realizes it's Linder. And this whole section right here, right, is a really tough thing where he basically says, who gets, he says here, talking about life, Mama, you always tell me to see, life, see life like it is while well, I laid in there on my back today and figured it out life just like it is, who gets and who don't get. And he keeps on going um, about 
you know, how Willie Harris took his money and he keeps on going. And then rock bottom, you know, he had, he basically is at the lowest point right here where he says he wants um, to Linder to come so um, they can uh, take the money from him. And then that's what's going to happen, he says. And then beneath this is where is the bottom? Again, referring to the bottom and the lowest, right? So we're still, the theme is at the lowest point, right? It's funny how ironically it's the highest point of tension, but it's the lowest point for the hero, right? And then he is basically talking about um, how he wants to do that. And Mama, right, over here points out, you know, you're killing me, making me cry, something awful pain. And he says, this is a betrayal of self, right? We ain't never been dead inside, Mama says. And what's the matter with you all? Um, and again, he keeps on going about how I want my wife to have pearls. But, you know, I think my wife should have pearls. Um, and then he keeps on talking about how he really wants to have these good things. But the man is, is stopping him, right? And then Mama says, how are you going to feel inside? He's going to be fine, fine, fine. This is a very difficult scene to watch. He actually is kneeling on the ground. And he's, he's at the, you know, he's kind of on the ground, you know, at this low point. Um, and he, this is a really difficult thing to, to read. Remember, I told you this is a language um, section, right? And then he says, he leaves and goes into the bedroom and Beneath this, it's not a man, it's a toothless rat. Now, this is a really, this is a trigger. Trigger, because mama's going to get angry, right? And she's going to say, death don't come in this here house. Don't come walking in my house on the list of my children. You what's supposed to be my beginning again. You what's supposed to be my harvest. Okay. Uh, you mourning your brother. He's no brother of mine. What you say? I said that individual in the room is no brother of mine. That's what I thought you said. You feeling like you're better than he is today? Yes. What you tell him a minute ago, that he wasn't a man? Yes, you give him up for me? You done wrote his epitaph too? Like the rest of the world? Well, who give you that privilege? And she says, be on my side for once. What he did, down on his knees. Don't you think I, you told me to despise any man who would do that? Do what he's going to do? Yes, I taught you that, me and your daddy, but I thought I also taught you something else too. I thought I taught you to love him. This is where mama talks about forgiveness, right? So forgiveness, oops, forgiveness, right? You're supposed to love and forgive, right? Love him. There's nothing left to love. There's always something left to love. And if you ain't learned that, you ain't learned nothing. Have you cried for that boy today? I don't mean for yourself and for the family because we lost the money. I mean for him, what he'd been through and what it done to him. When do you think it's the time to love someone the most, right? Perspective. It's when he is the lowest, right? And he can't believe in himself because the world done whipped him so. When you start measuring somebody, measure him right, child, measure him right. Right, Travis comes in, Grandma and Mother moving her downstairs, and then at the same time, coincidentally, I don't think so, right, Linda appears, right? They want to send Travis out of the room. Obviously, this is the one point, right? Where again, we see you people, which drives me nuts. Um, and then um, once they try to send Travis out of the room, um, Mama says, no, Travis is going to stay here. And I think that's on purpose, obviously, because Travis is supposed to hear Walter uh, make the decision, right? Go ahead, son, go ahead. And then as you read this, you realize that Linder and Walter are having this dance and conversation. Um, and he starts to kind of talk about how he's a great great group of people. We have a lot of pride. We're very proud people. He keeps talking about how his sister wants to be a doctor. Um, and then he talks about his son, right? And then this is it. This is the moment where I feel like it makes me so happy to read. Um, my father earned it for us brick by brick. We're going to move into the house. We don't want to make trouble, right? And that's it. And that's the redemption, right? This is the best part. And then Mama, you know, kind of says, these are my kids. They're crazy. I'm afraid you don't understand. My son was said, we're going to move. You know how these young folks is nowadays, mister. Can't do a thing with them. Goodbye. Right? And then Mama, ain't that the truth? Right? She goes on to say, let's get out of this place. Right? Family starts to file out. Also, guy asked me to marry him. I love that Walter says, what are you going to go after for? You should marry George Merchantson. I think this is kind of like comic relief. 
where he says, George Merchantson, I wouldn't marry him if I was Adam and he was, if he was Adam and I was Eve, right? And then this is the point where this is it. If he finally come into his manhood today. This is, this is the, the point of the whole ending of that hero's journey, right? And then Walter's voice comes out. Everybody goes out. Mama's left alone. And the stage directions are really important because she stands alone in the living room. Her plant on the table before her as the light starts to come down. She looks around at the walls. Despite herself, all the children call below. A great heaving thing rises in her and she puts her fist up in her mouth to stifle it. She takes a final desperate look, pulls her coat out about her, pats her hat and goes out. The lights dim down, the door opens and she comes back in, grabs her plant and goes out for the last time. And then we're finished. Yay. Right? I love the fact that that ending ends um, much better than it started. Okay, so this is basically it. Just want to make sure you guys go watch this video um, and point out the 3X structure. I'm going to give you questions for this after our ORP is due, so keep on the lookout for them. Otherwise, um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you, guys. Bye.